Hi, I'm Interlink Knight and I recently made a model of a 6-speed automatic transmission for 3D printing which is based on the Allison 1000. I put the link on the description if you want to print this model. Although I did some modifications to my model for 3D printing, the way it works is the same as the real transmission. So I thought it would be nice to use this model to show you how an automatic transmission works and how exactly the energy is transferred from one place to another to get all those key ratios. Each transmission is different, but most of them work basically the same way that this one, using planetary gear sets and applying clutches to connect parts of the transmission to the input, or to prevent parts of the transmission from moving. For this 6-speed automatic transmission, we have three planetary gear sets. These sets are made with four parts. The sun gear, the ring gear, the planet gears, and the carrier that holds the planet gears. From this, we have these three parts that we can connect to the input or hold still to prevent it from moving. So if, for example, we connect the input to the sun gear and we hold the ring gear, then we have the output on the carrier going at much slower speed than the input. Or maybe we can connect the input to the ring gear and hold the carrier so we have the output on the sun gear going faster than the input at the opposite direction. So we can play with different combinations to get different results. But this is where it gets interesting. All three planetary gear sets are connected in some way. For this transmission, the ring gear of P3 is connected to the carrier of P2. They are combined in the same part. Same for the ring gear of P2 that is connected to the carrier of P1. Also, the sun gear of P3 is connected to the sun gear of P2. The ring gear of P1 is not connected to anything else, and the carrier of P3 is connected to the output as one piece. So, now that we have all three planetary gear sets connected to each other, we get these three parts that we can stop from rotating using clutches, that are more like brakes. We will call them C3, C4, and C5. So when we say C3 is engaged, it means that part is held to the case and it cannot move. We also get three parts we can connect to the input, one of which is always connected to the input, no matter what. This sun gear will always rotate with the input because the rotation will transfer by these sliders that can move back and forward, but will always rotate together with the input. I made these two sliders to connect a part of the transmission to the input. So if C1 is engaged, this entire piece will rotate with the input. And if C2 is engaged, this other piece will be connected to the input. We can connect C1 and C2 independently from each other. On a real transmission, these two clutches are not like this. I made these sliders so it's practical to use on a 3D printed model. But the function is the same. Connect a part of the transmission to the input. I will put a link on the description to a video explaining how the real clutches works. But for now let's go how we get all six speeds. Here we can see which clutches we have to engage for each gear. For first gear we need to engage C1 and C5. This means these sun gears will rotate with the input, and this ring gear will be held still. Like I mentioned before, if we connect the sun gear to the input and hold the ring gear, then the carrier will move slowly in the same direction. For this model, the ratio is 3.2 to 1, meaning that the input has to rotate a little more than 3 turns to get one turn from the output. The other two planetary gear sets are also moving, but they are not transferring anything to the output, so we can ignore them for now. For second gear, we need to leave C1 engaged, but instead of engaging C5, we now engage C4, which is the ring gear of P2. Let's take a look at P2. As with first gear, we have the sun gear rotating with the input and the ring gear stop it, so the carrier turns slowly. But if you remember, the carrier of P2 is connected to the ring gear of P3. So that slow motion is transferred to the P3. So it's like first gear, but instead of the ring gear being still, it's now moving slowly in the same direction, adding a little more speed to the carrier. 
When the ring gear was hold still, we got a 3.2 to 1 ratio. But now that the ring gear is moving slowly in the same direction, the final ratio is 1.86 to 1. P1 is also moving, but again, it's not playing any role in second gear either. For third gear, we keep C1 engaged, but now we engage C3, preventing the ring gear of P1 from moving. This results in something like we got in second gear, but now we add the slow motion of the P1 to everything else. First, let's take a look at P1. If you remember, this sun gear will always rotate with the input, no matter what. And since the ring gear can't move because the C3 is engaged, the carrier is moving slowly in the same direction. The carrier is connected to the ring gear of P2, so it's the same as with second gear. But instead of the ring gear being stopped, now it's moving slowly, adding more speed to the carrier that connects to the ring gear of P3, adding that speed to what it would be first gear. For fourth gear, things are much simpler. We need to engage C1 and C2. This will result with the sun gear of P3 and the ring gear move with the input, not giving another choice to the carrier that move with them. So the final gear ratio is 1 to 1, meaning everything is moving together as one piece. Fifth gear is not that simple, but bear with me. Now we engage C2 and C3. C2 will make this part move with the input. And since we have C1 disengaged, this intermediate shaft is free to turn independently from the input. Remember that because it's going to be important later. So first let's see at P1. The input is coming to the sun gear and the ring gear is blocked by the C3 clutch. So as we already know, this will cause the carrier to move slowly in the same direction as the input. Keep in mind that this carrier is attached to the ring gear of P2. So we have this ring gear turning slowly, but this carrier is moving with the input too, because the C2 is engaged. So both motions force the sun gear to rotate at higher speed. Since that sun gear is connected to the sun gear of P3, it will add that speed to the ring gear that is rotating with the input to move the carrier that we already know is the final output. This result with a 0.7 to 1 ratio. So the output is turning a bit faster than the input. For sixth gear, we leave C2 engaged, but now we engage C4. That will leave P1 out of the equation because the carrier is stopped and the sun gear will move the ring gear freely without affecting anything else. So we will focus first on P2 that has the ring gear blocked and the input coming to the carrier, forcing the sun gear to turn very fast. Of course, that sun gear is turning the sun gear of P3, so that adds to the motion of the ring gear that is turning with the input, leaving the output carrier turning at 0.6 to 1 ratio. Now let's go to reverse, that is very interesting. We engage C3 and C5, so now the input is only going to the sun gear of P1. That ring gear can't move because the C3 is engaged. So as we already saw on this situation, the carrier will move slowly in the same direction. That slow motion will transfer to the ring gear of P2 because it's the same piece of the carrier of P1. But now we have this carrier blocked by the C5 clutch, which will force the sun gear to rotate at the opposite direction. As you should know, that sun gear is connected to the sun gear of P3, so that will end up like we was in first gear but now in the opposite direction and going much lower because of the reduction of speed that happened in the P1 that adds to the reduction on P3, which in total is 4.41 to 1. We only get left neutral and park. So now for a neutral, we only engage C5 to leave the P1 wasting all the motion from the input to turn that ring gear freely. The rest is free to move with the output. Park is the same as neutral. But in this case, the parking pole is engaged to the parking gear to prevent the vehicle from moving. Well, I think that's it. I hope it was helpful. See ya.